Hi guys, so here's what happened. Uh, I guess I should uh, put myself, I should bigger myself here. Uh, <clears throat> By all means. There. Uh, hi. So what happened was I was, uh, I was on, I was just like hanging out, uh, you know, uh, on Twitter. And uh, for the last couple of weeks, I've been on the road uh, and I uh, have ended up in Iowa. So I thought, hey, I'll go to the future birthplace of Captain Kirk because I've been hanging with all these like Trek guys, really nice, really nice guys, you know, over there. I mean, I actually think this one down here is more of a who guy, but, but this one's definitely a Trek guy. Um, and, uh, and so, and I met up with Eagle Rider there, Rosetta, and, and that was super fun. <clears throat> and then I had the thought today uh, to like see this other place that a friend on Twitter told me about, which is a statue to Captain Janeway, um, <laughs> which we'll we'll get to in a second. So I sent a I sent a message to Kate Mulgrew, who is the actress who plays played Captain Janeway, you know, thinking maybe she would want to talk. And then I thought, oh my gosh, I went to Captain Trick's uh, Captain Trek, Captain Kirk's future. Hi, Captain Trek. <laughs> You're on my mind. Uh, I went to Captain Kirk's future birthplace and didn't even reach out to William Shatner, you know, the man himself. So, so <clears throat> literally I just, I just shot off a tweet cause I know he, he's on Twitter and, and that's often like <clears throat> a way that I reach out to, to people because, you know, one great thing about Twitter, or I guess it can be used for good or evil, is um, is that you have a direct connection with your audience. And I have found this super useful myself because because I don't really like to be ele elevated above anybody. I let, you know. So anyway, I, sh I shot out a text to him and or a tweet to him that just said, you know, hey, if you want to get on a live stream with me at the future birthplace, you know, it'd be great. And hey, I promise I'm a real reporter because. I guess I was a little bit uncomfortable, I don't know, uh, asking about that when there's so much political news going on and, and so much of my audience uh, are people who are interested in, in politics. So um, so anyway, and then he, I, I expected to be ignored because if you have that big an audience, that's what you do is ignore random randos. Um, you know, jumping on. And his response, which I don't have Twitter up in front of me, I guess I should have done that. But his response was something like, you know, a, a real reporter doesn't reach out and request interviews on uh, over Twitter. And like, fine, except that <laughs> activated a bunch of friends of mine who are real reporters and who took a, some offense to that. And um, suddenly, you know, friends of mine who have 300,000 subscribers on Twitter were saying things like, Seabrook's been reporting for a long time and she's a real reporter. And so there's this, all this storm. And the thing that got me really in the end is like that William Shatner in several tweets was claiming that I was publicly shaming him um, <laughs> to try and get an interview. And, um, and, and here we are. I mean, the president of the United States just gave a live statement on television about pandemic and vaccines and things. And, and, uh, and here I am on, on YouTube and Twitch and Facebook talking about William Shatner blocking me on Twitter today. So it's a hard news day, folks, and we're here with the real important stuff. Let me bring in, let me bigger my guests here. We have the venerable uh, Bird of Prey 5 and the uh -huh. venerable Professor Brainy Specs. Please, please say hello while I mess around here with this, uh, with this platform. Hello, oh, world. Bird, it's Birdo Prey 5, Cup's Law. There's the introduction I was waiting for. Way yeah. to go, Bird. <laughs> and Andrea, I am a big, huge Trek guy. So, oh, okay. Uh, Sorry. I, 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 love, I love Trek is just as much as I love Doctor Who. So, okay. I both camp. Let me make sure I get that right. Okay. <clears throat> okay. Very, very important details. Um, Birdo Prey. If you I heard had you to choose, if you had to choose, Jeff, which would it be? <laughs> If I had to choose, I would be in the TARDIS. 
Then See? See? You, know you got something right. By a smidgen. <laughs> By a smidgen. Oh. Just look at the handles for a second. We got Brainy Specs, Professor Brainy Specs, who I got the etymology of that uh, just the other day on somebody's stream. Uh, I think it might have been a question of track, great people, talking about the fact that that derives from some who thing, doesn't it? Your name, Professor Brady Specs? Oh, yes. The uh, Seventh Doctor, which is my favorite. Oh, it was a Sunday stream, um, old media guy's stream. Okay. Uh, and, and I explained <laughs> where my name came from. My favorite doctor is the Seventh Doctor. And his companion, his main companion, Ace, called him the Professor. So I always liked that. Uh, he had that moniker. And a lot of the doctors wore brainy specs you know they put them on make themselves look smarter than they actually are which i mean they look brilliant anyway but uh some of them felt you know i need to put on the glasses and make myself look smarter but the seventh doctor never did but one day uh, just just going around the internet i found a old picture of uh production of of when they were doing the Seventh Doctor stories, and Sylvester McCoy, the actor that plays Doctor Who, uh, the Seventh Doctor, he was in costume, and he had these glasses on. And I, I took a snippet of that picture, and that became my avatar. And then, of course, um, Yitza, uh, Yitza made this great made this great uh, avatar for me, uh, Br Professor Brainy Specs, and that's how I got the name. Professor Brainy Specs. I always loved the Brainy Specs. I always loved the Seventh Doctor, so it just went together. Here's another Yitzhak Lemons. If you look, oops, wrong way, up there. It's my new Yitzhak Lemons uh, over by Bird. Um, and I rem I think I remember this, that that whole discussion so well, in, in part because the show is great, but also in part because I immediately broke out into, Professor, what's another word for pirate treasure? Well, I think it's <laughs> Booty, 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 booty. That's what it is. And anybody, I feel like anybody who is my age, like squarely Gen X, went to college in the early '90s, should know that as a classic Beastie Boys track from uh, "Check Your Head." Never heard of it. <sighs> well, you know, Andrea. It looks like my name is Andrea. Yes, it does. So, I guess I, that's I my new name. I'm live with Andrea. <laughs> I, I considered that and I decided to leave it. Just like my background and all of the orange and purple, um, there was some ribbing me about having several different fonts and things, and I have decided that this is my new calling card, is bad design, um, because it's so much easier than good design. Okay, um, and Bird of Prey, I have always known that you hate Star Trek. It's really it's really obvious from your name, right? I hate new Star Trek. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> I hate, I hate Even Star lower Trek decks? produced since 2009 <laughs> onward. I mean, Lower Decks might be the best of the worst, but uh, <laughs> if I could just erase it all from history, I would. Gotcha. But in all seriousness, uh, seriousness, when when I when I thought about doing this stream, I, I want to make sure I'm putting my glasses on and off enough for Darren, because he loves that when I do that. Um, uh, when I was when I was like, okay, what do I do? Okay, well, if I wouldn't be a YouTuber if I didn't say, oh my God, I gotta, you know, I gotta get people. I got to tell people what happened here. You know, I wouldn't be, I wouldn't be able to call myself a, not that I do call myself a YouTuber, but you know what I mean? I had to use this, this moment when I got noticed, not only noticed by William Shatner, but I got, uh, you know, I, he claimed that I, <laughs> that I was uh, shaming him publicly as if I had that kind of power. <laughs> um at any rate, then my first thought was, well, holy shit, I can't give people the impression that I know anything about Star Trek compared to the people I've been hanging out with. So I thought, oh, my God, quick, get, you know, get Bird of Prey 5, get Professor Bainey Specs, you know. There's no shortage of people, Trek fans and otherwise, who have been blocked by William Shatner. No, tell me uh, that. Yeah. And, and, and in For, fact, Tim Christ in the chat says I was blocked by William Shatner as well. Really, uh, Tim? Yep. So Tim has been blocked. I thought I was going to get blocked by him today, but somehow I escaped that. And John DeMarco says wingdings. Oh, yeah. Wingdings. <laughs> I will use you gotta many have the wingdings. wingdings. 
yeah, I'll get there. I'll get there. You, my my design okay. process is is slow and deliberate. For and, uh, uh, for a long time, Doomcock was blocked by William Shatner until um, some YouTube channel took up a challenge and ended up raising several thousand dollars for Shatner's charity to get Doomcock unblocked. Why um, was Doomcock blocked in the first place? A, a misunderstanding. Apparently, he he said something that William Shatner thought he was attacking him, and uh, Doomcock would never attack William Shatner. But once he Doomcock's was blocked, like he was the blocked. Guy on the planet too. I mean, you know, uh, for those of you out there who don't live in the like nerd verse of YouTube, they who might not know Doomcock, do his what is it? Uh, he's got to, he's he's got it like a. A persona of Overlord. Overlord DVD on YouTube. Yeah. And he, Doomcock wasn't. He is the, he is, uh, <laughs> he's going to take over the world and he lives in a secret base at the center of the earth with Harvey. Cthulhu. Yeah, right. The molten yeah. iron core. An of Eldridge the, God uh, trapped, trapped in, uh, well, <laughs> Depends who tells the story. He's either trapped in a little <laughs> fish bowl, or or he has free reign under his dimension. But, but, but I mean, yeah. it's obvious that this is utter. Doomcock, yeah, Doomcock loves Star Trek. He loves oh, William yeah. Shatner, and he's um, a lovely guy. This is the guy who's always on. Like, if somebody says I'm not having a good day, a good day or something, Doomcock will be like, I'm so sorry. Like, he's yeah. lovely. He'll sing you a song. He'll he'll like perform voices he's like a wonderful guy now i will grant you that if you don't if you're not on his live streams the persona he puts out on his uploaded videos of, of, of an evil villain uh you might get the idea that he's a very negative person who only you know uh spreads hate but that yeah. is not the real doomcock uh, no it, people who, yeah. who really know him and even if he was Either way, he loved William Shatner. Right. Um, so it was literally just William Shatner has an issue where he will block people prematurely and 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 without knowing the full reason, you know, he yeah. doesn't understand the issue. He blocks he blocks people. He blo honestly he blocks people quicker than millennials block people. Uh, <laughs> for, for somebody who's about to turn ninety. You yeah. would think he would have a little thicker skin. Seriously. Uh, so. Well, we're getting a little bit of a story here in the chat. Darren Wagner says Red Letter Media was blocked by the chat. And Tim Chris says that uh, he was blocked because he defended Red Letter Media and said that they had much respect for him. He wasn't having it. What did Red Letter Media say? You know, I, I, I pinged uh, Eli Hughu, another friend of the channel, uh, and asked him how he got blocked by William Shatner. And Elihu said that he can't even remember what joke he told, but it was something about a horse and a toupee. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, oh my God, somebody, somebody tell me uh, what the joke with the horse and the toupee is. Cause I really, I really, really want to know. <laughs> anyway, um, so, uh, yeah, so it's like, at first I was like, this is just so ridiculous. I had some people back channeling, like saying, are you okay? It's like, yeah, no, I've, I've, I've had much, much worse than this. I once had Christopher Guest once, uh, you know, he's the guy who did, who does all the, he did best in show and, uh, all those, you know, f sort of mockumentary movies. He, I was interviewing him once about something. I think it was. In one of the lesser known of those movies called Home for Purim, <laughs> which is which is pretty funny, but it's got Catherine, uh, Catherine, Kathleen O'Hara, you know, the one who's in Schitt's Creek and it's that whole gang, right? Eugene Levy and and the gang. And uh, I, he was so unhappy with the interview or something. I couldn't quite figure out what I'd done wrong that he at the end was Whole, he had written on a piece of paper, how much longer do I have to do this? It was like holding it up on the studio, like glass to his producer who was back with the engineer. <laughs> so that, that felt worse because it was, you know, in person and I was obviously disappointing him. I once 
when I was interviewing um, Willem Dafoe uh, early, early in my hosting career, mm. um, asked him why he always played weird characters. <laughs> and he had a face on him like, who the fuck is asking me such stupid questions? <laughs> That was another, you know, great Seabrook moment um, uh, in, in infamy. Uh, but, uh, but I never expected, it. like, I didn't say anything. It was just such a weird and crazy reaction of William Shatner today that I just, just felt yeah, like it had over, to be a reaction. Yeah. He tends to do that. Now, now, Tim Christ is saying further, Red Letter Media didn't actually say anything. There was a Twitter craze of having Shatner on Red Letter Media's show, but they actually didn't do anything. The, they actually made a vid about it, he says. And then uh, further down, Shatner didn't like their style of humor, so he started blocking people that they were being too forceful in their defense. <laughs> Okay. I don't know and, why he and, would but, pay any attention to us. <laughs> and while Mike asks, you were in the White House, right? Got to have worse interactions there. Actually, um, I think he's joking yeah, there, but yeah, yeah. It, it, but but you know, I mean, I spent most of most of the times that I have covered the White House, it was during the Bush administration, and uh, and George W. Bush was a lovely man to work with. Um, you know, I've worked with horrible members of Congress, um, just, just, just really vile, evil people who will yell in your face kind of people. Uh, but, but the white house is usually a little bit more buttoned down than that. It depends on how good your story is. You start pushing buttons and people don't react well, but that, that's what was so strange about this was, uh, you know, and, and, and Obama was a lovely man to interview as well. I mean, the, you know, most most people in Washington have some some governor on their emotions most of the time. <laughs> um, but uh, but um, what was I going to say? Oh, it just felt all completely inconsequential. This, you know, I'm just sitting there going, "This is so dumb. I can't believe anyone's talking about this. This is so dumb." Um, and then uh, and then it occurred to me that like there is a serious question at its heart, though. At least in journalism, there were a lot of people kind of saying. Well, you shouldn't, you know, you, you have the responsibility as a real journalist to go through these, you know, channels. And that's sort of what he had been saying, too, right, was was that as a journalist, I should know better than to reach out on Twitter. And and that that got even more kind of strange when people were backing him up and saying, you know, you're putting so much pressure on him. You're putting public pressure on him. It's like, no, I think the power dynamic is actually the exact reverse of that. He has no responsibility to, and I have no expectation, frankly, that he will respond to me. You know, it's yeah, just. I mean, if he oh, didn't been... want to take the interview, it seemed like the appropriate thing would have been to just ignore it. Yeah. No one, no one would have been any wiser. There wouldn't have been any backlash. There wouldn't have been any PR. And now if you had, you know, harassed him day after day, you know, for a week, that's something different. But one, you know, one yeah. request. For an interview, and you know, if he doesn't want to, he doesn't want to be bothered with people asking him directly. Then just ignore it and let it, let it, let it die. Yeah, well, he's yeah. Been, he's been in Hollywood for sixty years. He's been famous <laughs> for like fifty. Uh, John DeMarco <laughs> says Shatner is a celebrity. He should be used to public scrutiny. Well, yeah, and I, I did wonder at one point if, if there's some collusion or something on my part in retweeting what other, you know, other people started to get upset. And, and I was kind of honored in a way that other people would protect my uh, reputation or something. Uh, I mean, that's super kind. Um, but I wondered if, if by me retweeting and his name being, you know, in that retweet, if he felt like I was mm -hmm. Doing what he said, which is you know like putting Probably organizing some help. campaign, but but you know at the same time it's like this is Twitter and Twitter you know this Twitter is not new, and it's like I don't know I just I just think why is this man even paying any attention to this? How could he possibly be feeling any pressure from me? <laughs> it just seems absolutely uh, inane. And you were talking about Elihu, who he's in the chat now. Oh, good, good, good to and see he you. He says, 
He says, for your information, Tim Russ will talk a little Star Trek, but we'll talk your ear off about astronomy. Huh. <laughs> Excellent. Excellent. Which fits right in with you, Elihu Hu. <laughs> I'm kind of surprised Kate Mulgrew didn't answer you. Cause oh, she might. She may have, too. I, I don't know. I was going to always... say, because she seems to be doing anything she can to drum up, uh, drum up popularity for her pro Star Trek Prodigy, which she'll be starring in and coming out in a couple of months, by all accounts. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I, yeah she, might, she might reach out to you. My Twitter is it has been, as you can imagine, totally insane uh, since all of this happened. I cannot keep up with it. The only other time that this has happened to me is when, uh, have you guys ever seen Key and Peele? The, the show that was on Comedy Central with uh, have, Egan Michael I've, Key and Jordan Peele. I've seen no, an I episode seen it. once in a, you know, a little bit. They did a, they did a sketch on uh, around the Super Bowl. I don't remember what year it was. It was the Seahawks versus somebody. So maybe that helps you with the timing. But um, where they did this weird, it was like Super Bowl co connections. Where, I don't know. They did a sketch and they ended up using me in the sketch to make a connection between... Uh, the Seahawks and Bill Belichick, uh, who went to the same high school I did. <laughs> so, so suddenly out of nowhere on Key and Peel, which at the time was super popular, there was a picture of me and, you know, you know, Jordan Peel, um, saying like, you know, uh, Bill Belichick, Andrea Seabrook, Seabrook, Seahawks. <laughs> like it was totally. Oh, jeez. Wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it blew up my Twitter because everyone was like, oh my God. And I had no idea they were going to do it. But that's the only other time I've experienced like where my phone be becomes like a, a giant, huge uh, machine of nuisance. You know, it, it, it might as well, might as well be a vibrator. You know, it's just like sitting there. Uh, being I don't computer. want to know what you do with your phone. <laughs> Throw it out the window. Uh, <laughs> I, I, uh, it, it, at least it, when that's happening. Um, well, yeah. Hi, before Kasha. Thomas, before Thomas Potts says I'm ignoring him, I just want to point out that he <laughs> says someone commented that you were a wannabe reporter. So another guy put out a, a little video showing all your articles. Really? Apparently so. That's what Thomas <laughs> is saying. Now, I've not seen that video, but. I bet that would be interesting to see. I got the feeling that William Shatner sh saw that, and so you were, you know, had a history with politics, and thought that you were trying to get him or something with some type of mm. po political reporting because he is a, you know, he's a big target. Mm. Um, is he of of yeah? He's a big target of let's say the the I, don't know, I, I hate saying just the left, but. The, yeah. the kind of loony left hmm. on Twitter because, um, well, he 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 doesn't um, he doesn't abide by their you know their pro he doesn't put pronouns yeah. yeah he doesn't put pronouns in his bio uh, bi biographies Twitter mm -hmm. bio and he doesn't he doesn't bow down to to you know putting flags right. and things when when they want him to do things. He's kind of his own guy, and um, so he's often a target of the PC police or whatever. Yeah. Uh, so he's very defensive. So he might have just seen it and thought, oh, this is just somebody that's going to want to, you know, make me, quote me on something just to. I see. I have no idea. I, I'm just, that's my guess. Yeah. Um, yeah. Looking at, at, the, at the post he, he quoted. Uh, or responded to that was one of them. Hmm. So yeah, well, and I don't blame anybody who's wary around journalists, especially political journalists. I mean, I have no. Uh, I'm the one who has to gain the trust there uh, with my work and myself. So I, I don't blame. I don't blame anybody for that um, at all. Uh, but you know, different different people handle it in different ways, and. Um, and, uh, you know, before I, I, I want to talk about, uh, I, I see that Kasha, um, Mustin Herrick is in the chat and I want to make sure that, uh, that, uh, I say a couple, I want to talk about something that's specific to Kasha's work, but, 
Uh, for example, like one one other story. One time, I had Kevin Costner in the studio. He was he was doing he was on one of these um, junkets, one of these tours where he's got you know twenty five interviews a day or something, and they get super exhausted. This is the reason why I reach out on Twitter and try and do something when they're not on a junket because. Generally, you know, if they're selling a book or a TV show, you'll see them over and over and over again on every outlet all at once within like three days. And they say the same talking points that were written by the PR agency that's flacking the movie or whatever it is. So, and I, I just don't want to do any of that, right? So I reach out to people sometimes to see if they want to do something weird and interesting. Oops. That's my phone. And, 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 you know, oftentimes they do want to do something weird and interesting, you know? So, you know, I've had good luck with that. So, uh, but one time Kevin Costner came in on one of these junkets and, uh, and I knew that he was exhausted. You could tell he had his, um, he had his sunglasses on in the studio. Studios don't have windows in them because you want as little glass as possible in a studio to reflect sound. So it doesn't reflect sound. And, uh, he sits down and, um, I was like kind of chatting him up to try and get him to loosen up a little bit and do, do something a little different about the movie that he was flacking. And, uh, and I asked him, you know, so what's it like? And he's explaining it. He said, ah, it's terrible. And I said, well, what's the worst, what's the question that you always get that you just can't stand? And he said, well, people, people always ask me about my ex-wife and my divorce. You know, he's like, I hate that crap. I hate it. You know, he's sitting at NPR. He knows that that's not our bag. We're in a studio, you know, um, the, the engineer is messing with his microphone and doing all the things that make it sound great. And, um, and then the engineer goes back into the control room and he goes, oh, are we ready? Rolling, rolling. Okay. And so I started and I said, Mr. Costner, uh, I'm, I'm here with Kevin Costner, who is, uh, who is, uh, doing his new movie. And, um, you know, I, I'd love to start out with, a, an important question. So, so tell me about your divorce, <laughs> and your ex-wife. Uh. <laughs> It wasn't live. <laughs> it was to tape. And he looked at me for a full like five seconds. It was like, like I had, sl and then he <laughs> keeled over in utter laughter. He thought it was the funniest thing that like had happened to him in days that somebody would even cross that line with a celebrity and make a joke like that. Um, and he was lovely. It was absolutely. And so we, so then I was like, no, 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 we're not going to do that. And we laughed and laughed and laughed. And then we started the interview again and it ended up being a really good, loose, fun interview about this movie in part because if, with just doing that one little thing, you can develop a rapport with someone like they, they have a little bit more, you I don't put know. Them at ease. Yeah, somehow. Um, and I just felt like, like, I wonder if Twitter there's no way for me to, to, to like get across the meanness like that. So that he knows that I, that the, the request I'm making is a silly request. Like, you know, you're William Shatner and I'm asking to put you on a YouTube stream from the future birthplace of a character you played a million and a half years ago. Like it's a silly, you know, like there's no way for me to emote and be myself in that request. So maybe it just comes across really flat. I don't know. No comment. Am it I seems frozen? like you're like overqualified <laughs> for the request you were making. I don't know, but like, if if you if you were doing it the way you know, just just on YouTube on channel like like this, um, I, I don't know. Um, I feel like throwing it. I'm I'm a real reporter. Kind of, kind of makes it like you know, makes him think it's going to be one thing <laughs> that it it wasn't it wasn't intending to be. I I don't I don't I don't know. <laughs> yeah, and it's weird. Well, I mean, go ahead. Sorry. <laughs> no, that's okay. You you said that you weren't expecting an answer at all. So were were you just kind of just plain and see? Well, no, I mean, I wanted happen, an man. answer. I, I meant it seriously, but, but you know, you often don't get an answer to things like this. Uh, the, what, what they do is ignore you, not insult you. <laughs> well, you know? Shatner tends to, to insult. Right, he's and I don't... Pompous, he's a little arrogant, so, you know, he does yeah. that kind of thing. Oh, I totally, like, and and... 
by doing it publicly like that, I, I deserve every public thing anybody wants to say about it. And so does he, you know, to me, it's just, it's like standing in a public room and, and doing that. It, it's, I don't know. I, there's something that I, uh, that I truly love about the, uh, the quote unquote new media, as he said, um, the way that, the we, we reduce distance between ourselves and our audience. And, and I actually think that what we're doing here, what you guys do, what all of our friends do on these YouTube channels is, is the new uh, journalism in a way. Uh, and I can back that up. It is a, it is different than the expectation of objective information. That's uh, uh, you know, that has its genre already, you know, whether it's politics or economy or science or whatever, it, we're doing something different, but, um, but this is a much more human way of communicating. And, and I kind of, and it's better, it's better to have more chaos than it is to have one single, uh, supposedly objective message. That is the correct message coming out of one man's mouth. Um, I'm thinking of, you know, I, I love Walter Cronkite, but this world, which is chaotic and crazy is better than, the the world of one single narrative of news. Um, go ahead. Sorry. <clears throat> no, I, I just, just I believe if I can talk. <laughs> <laughs> what I was going to say is that uh, you experienced that the other night on your interview. You had a lot of chaos on that stream. Oh, <laughs> yes, that was ridiculous. Um, let me uh, let me say uh, quickly that. I did actually do a video. I tried to live stream, but I managed to do a video from uh, from the uh, future birthplace of of Captain Kirk. Um, and you know, I was this whole stupid thing started about me going back because because I I was very like um, kind of smug about a one single line of text that I wrote, which was you know, we have to study our future history because if we don't, we'll be doomed to three-peat it. <laughs> and um, that's why I was like, you know what? I really, I got to get back there because that's such a good line. I got to, anyway, way too much information. Um, but wow. uh, Eli Huhu says, let Professor Brainy Speck speak, please. He's not LDG. You can get a word or two in. <laughs> okay. All right. <laughs> I don't know. Is that true for LDG? Does he talk? I don't, I don't, I have an experience. He does talk a lot. Okay. I have not had it. So um, I realized the other night that I cannot follow the chat and have a coherent thought at the same time. So um, besides Professor Brainy Speck's incredible just knowledge about these things, I asked him to keep an eye on the chat for me. So thank you. My, my I'm trying. I'm doing my best. So what's going on out there in the chat? <laughs> well, what's going on out there in the chat? Let's see. Uh, I want to say something that uh, Darren Wagner said bef a little before. And when you were talking about Kevin Costner, he said, my mom's most prized possession is a framed picture she has of her and Kevin Costner when she met him at the Space Jam premiere back in the 90s. Very Space cool, Jam. Darren Wagner. Space Jam's been in the news recently with uh, what Lola Kitty, right, Bunny? Didn't I she don't the know. one they you, you tell me. Like they, didn't they just desexify, you know, uh, uh, space Lola Kitty or whatever? Am I totally off? Somebody tell us in the chat. Anyway, you go ahead. Uh, let's see what else do we have here. Latino slant says Tox Texas Rock Jam, seven p.m. Pacific time. Please oh, stop yeah. by. So please do stop by uh, for Latino slants Texas Rock Jam. And that's is that tonight. Yeah, yeah, it's coming up in like uh, about less than minutes. an hour. Yeah, fifty-two minutes. So we we got to wrap this up pretty quick, don't we? Yeah, yeah, yeah. In the next fifty-two minutes, okay. Yeah, quick, fifty-two minutes. Okay, File Mike says seriously, Andrea, this is something that I would pull even against someone like that. Kudos. Thank you. <laughs> uh, Latino, Latino slant over eight K impressions on Twitter when I tweeted it says he lie who who, I guess he's referring to his joke that he told uh, Chatner that he didn't that Chatner didn't like. Yeah, um, Lola Chris Bunny. Says, Lola Bunny. It's not Lola Kitty. It's Lola Bunny. They like de-sexied her. 
they like took away some of her chest, chestal, chestal region and uh, made her look different. Anyway, go ahead. <laughs> Sorry. Tim Chris says to you, I think you should go back to NPR and make a headline on how Shatner blocked you. Lol. Because mm, it's very important. <laughs> oh, yes. Definitely. <laughs> uh, Kashina Mustin Herrick, is it? Is that Kasha. how you pronounce it? Kasha, Kasha Mustin uh, Kasha. Herrick. Herrick, yeah. Okay. I, I, my apologies, Kasha. Uh, he says, she says, yep, he's a douche. <laughs> Kasha's one of my best friends. It, it, like, like that, that woman knows me, uh, better than anybody on this planet, really. Um, and, uh, one thing that I discovered, I did not know this about Shatner today, but when I started, when this whole thing started, people started texting me and saying, the guy has been really, uh, off putting to people in the, um, uh, neurodiversity community. So people who uh, are supportive of and are in have are non neurotypical. So people in the autism who have autism spectrum disorder, or who are somewhere, you know, on that differently kind of brain, I will say, no, that I am... that's, I'm sorry, but that's mischaracterization. Oh, is it? Okay. He, hold on. he has his own opinions, which is different from autism speaks. Autism okay. Speaks is a big autism yep. charity foundation, and they have one, you know, their line of thinking on how yes. to treat and live with autism. Yep. He has nothing against people with autism, but his opinion on how autistics should, I guess, live their lives, be treated, and whatever, just differs from that opinion. Okay. And as such, there's conflict, but it's not okay. that he dislikes them. Okay, it's just okay. He he has a different opinion. Thank you, I appreciate that. And uh, and I uh, I think what what I mean to say then is that he got into a scuffle with with a part of the uh, community, I guess. Uh, he and did, I, and it is it's a big scuffle. Yes. Okay, and I happen to know that Autism Speaks is a. Uh, organization that is founded by and run by uh, behavioral therapy people. So the, so the, uh, is it American Behavioral Therapy Association, something like that, the ABA. Um, I could actually look that up and, and know the answer to that. And I'm sure Kasha is telling me in the, uh, um, in the chat somewhere, but the behavioral therapy for autism focuses like, I will probably get something here wrong, but focuses on um, uh, c correcting behaviors in uh, in people who are diagnosed as being on the autism spectrum. And there is a movement um, against the uh, focus on correcting behavior, making people act right, uh, rather than actually sort of looking at how different kinds of brains work and how they communicate and what they're good at and what, you know, actually. Um, so, so I understand I've, I've recently in the last year or so been working with Kasha on this project. And I, it's just amazing that William Shatner is linked into this. So, so I think um, what I should do is uh, do another show at some point and have people who know what they're talking about on. But, uh, but I will say that I'm very much a supporter of Amazing Brains, uh, which is an organization that is, was started by Kasha and I've worked on some and the, uh, the acknowledgement of different brains, having different, uh, th that having a brain that works differently doesn't mean necessarily that you should be, uh, shamed into acting uh, like other people. And I'm not saying that he said that either, but just there is. I would, I would strongly suggest if you're, if you're going to do that, I know people are going to cringe when I say this, uh, but talk to anti-tracker because okay. his son is autistic uh -huh. and he has a story of him and his son meeting William Shatner. Interesting. And William Shatner taking the time uh, to acknowledge what was going on and, he yep. has a personal story uh, with him, his son, and William Shatner that could, you know, contribute to what you're talking about. Well, and and that's and personal I firsthand experience from one of ours in the community. Yeah. Oh, okay. It, absolutely. And you know what's interesting? I have uh, another friend who has a, a kid who's on the spectrum, and 
who I've been talking to about this stuff. He, this is a brilliant guy in Washington, very connected, well known, uh, who who had never heard of this uh, controversy between the ABA, uh, you know, behavioral therapy, behavioral focus therapy, and neurodiversity, um, uh, you know ways of, of looking at different kinds of brains. And, um, and it, it, it made me realize once again, that this is such a new thing and to force people onto a side, right. And act as if, you know, not even knowing that this thing is out there means that you're, that you're automatically a bad person or something is, is really not, not the way to go about this. That that's the way to sort of politicize it, and we don't want to do that. But um, but it is worth talking about anyway. Um, I know you know I I I don't feel handicapped in any way, but I know that I'm diagnosed ADHD, and I know that my brain works really differently than a lot of other people's, and I've managed to like work that around into a good thing. Um, uh, I think sometimes some of my friends might not disagree, might not agree if they're trying to meet me at a specific time and place. <laughs> but, um, but, uh, but, you know, uh, different brains are, are wonderful things. And I, I didn't mean to turn this all into the, in, into that, that show, but, uh, but it is amazing when you touch a, a specific idea, all kinds of things happen. Well, Andrea, it's your show. You can go anywhere you want with it. <laughs> Yeah, I, I, Kasha is saying they're still focused on helping autistic. This is the ABA she's talking about. Still focused on helping autistic people to become more typical, uh, which can have very dire consequences, consequences, including depression and suicide. And you know, there's that. That is, I don't want to impugn any one kind um, of person, but uh, with a, any one person with any. Uh, opinions that they haven't stated. It's just, it's a totally new thing and we got to look at it. And the most really fascinating companies, organizations are realizing that people who are quote diagnosed as being on the spectrum can actually take their amazing brains uh, and turn them into incredible assets um, instead of acting as if it's a diagnosis that needs to be fixed. Um, so that's uh, let's let's move back to the pop cult squarely to the pop culture uh, realm of this uh, for a second. And um, uh, Professor Brainy Specs, what what are people talking about out there? Well, Richie Richie Pool says uh, so. The chat blocked Andrea. Marina Sirtis blocked Bird. And then uh, Richie wants to know if anyone has blocked me. That's a Star Trek actor, and I actually, yeah, I have been blocked by a Star Trek actor on Facebook. Um, George Takai will occasionally step in it, make a just an off the wall statement. I don't even remember what he said, but but I commented back to him on something, and he blocked me on Facebook. Wow! Like four years ago, four or five years ago. Well, guys, I, I don't even remember what it was about. But... Blocked. <laughs> We're being blocked by the people we look up to. The but well, we don't look up to necessarily the actors, but by the people we idolize in their roles, and they're blocking us left and right. Well, Richie, I want to thank you because I had forgotten all about that, and asking that question, it, it just suddenly came back. You're not so a real you. Trek fan until you've been blocked by a <laughs> Trek actor. <laughs> Well, well, you know, I thought I was going to get blocked by Marina Sirtis last month over the Texas thing, because I actually live in Texas, and I thought today that the chat was going to block me, because I, uh, I went to because back there for Andrea. Because you stuck up for me! Yeah, yeah you, you were like a knight in shining he might, he armor. Might, yeah. Oh. <laughs> yeah, you might still do it. You yeah, might I might still. still. You never know. <laughs> well, uh, you know, it just uh, it just is one of those days where you look up and say, gosh... It started out being about, you know, I don't know, journalism and, and uh, normal things in my life and ended up being about William Shatner. How does that happen? You just, you just don't know where life's going to take you. You just don't know where life's going to take you. It's true. Vile well, says he well, hasn't been blocked by any Trek actor, yet. not even Manu. Uh, <laughs> Well, that uh, that goes to show you, uh, Vile uh, Mike, that that I am a bigger Trek fan than you. 
Wow. Uh, Bio Mike also said uh, both actor and journalist are not legally protected professional titles, unlike mm -hmm. doctor or lawyer. So legally, anyone can call themselves that. Uh, what do you think of that? Oh, Andrew? sure. I think that's... I think totally. You should absolutely yeah. suspect anybody who calls them themselves an actor or a journalist. <laughs> most, most actors are waiters and most journalists are hacks. Um, that said, I mean, and I, you know, I'm, I'm only, you know, 80% joking, um, to be a, being a journalist is not a professional. It's not a, I don't even know how to describe it. It's to me anyway, it's like, it's, it's a philosophy of life. Um, but because I, that's why I actually, when I started the stream, I was like, okay, here's what happened. Like, I got to tell you exactly what happened. And then I can tell you sort of my thoughts about it. But, um, but yeah, a journalist is known by their body of work. I'm not bound by a Hippocratic oath. Uh, you know, what were you saying? This Bert? is why you should always look for a Caroga certification <laughs> for your actors, oh your journalists and your advice columnists. Well, I was I was certified in Trash Canistan, the waste basket of the Midwest. I mean, well, what's yeah, their you, seal look like? Uh, well, I'll, I'll have uh, I'll have uh, Joseph Petrick uh, do the art for that because his his art is, <laughs> is top notch. <laughs> Joseph Petrick, I haven't seen his art yet. Oh, didn't Joseph? Uh, do the art? No, was that you, Bert, or did the art? Of uh, I did Joseph's latest avatar, if that's what you mean. <sighs> well, there's no way I'm going to the head of Caroga for my art for our seal. Uh, I guess I might have to stoop to the level of Yitzhak Lemons. You could just kidnap a seal from Canada and use that as your seal. Yeah, but who puts a leaf on a seal? Like, what What do you think you are? That's not scary or or, you know, beautiful or whatever you think it is. Canadians. Do you know who's Canadian? William Shatner. William Shatner. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Damn Canadians. Well, it, you know, I, I liked your tweet earlier. I was shat canned. Uh, yes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. That so was another I, I, good phrase. <laughs> so I don't know if you saw my reply or not, but I, I asked you, were you put in the trash canistan? <gasps> I didn't see that reply. Somehow I missed some things, but it, you know, I got it. That is, that is very good. We make a good team, man, uh, with the words, you know, uh, I think we do. Yeah. <laughs> Vile Mike is pointing out that I have a much better certification than, than a Corogan one that I am Jepnerdy certified. In fact, I, I should upload my Jepnerdy card and put it on my incredibly beautifully designed um, background and overlay here. Don't you guys think? <laughs> oh, I want to know, did everybody like my countdown timer? I want some love for my little pirates dancing. Did you love it? I thought it was great myself. It, very unique. I haven't seen that on YouTube before. <laughs> I liked it. I, I thought maybe the uh, music could use a little changing around or oh, yeah? afraid, but the uh, well you're the so good at so many really things like. maybe i'll have you change up the music well I'm, i mean there's there's sources for music free music from youtube that you can use that you know that's royalty free <laughs> um, i was just, very pleased uh, bird bird just steals it all i mean he's just like that <sighs> Oh gosh, Richie Pool. Yeah. Well, I, I was just going to say about Darren Wagner's comment earlier. He said journalism is the only industry that is specifically protected in the U.S. Constitution. Unfortunately, there isn't much journalism out there right now anymore. It's pretty much all media now. It's all commentary. Well, okay, then you have to define what you're actually talking about. And and actually, I was on. Uh, you guys know uh, Lev uh, Polya, is it Polyakov? Yeah, who has a show called Break the Rules. Um, they're really interesting channel. They, 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 I kind of, I kind of think of them as like post political in a way. They're, they're, they're in that intersection where conservatives come and liberals, when they leave their stupid silos, come back around towards each other. And, and I always like that there. Um, but uh, but we were talking. I was talking to them about 
the fact that really I think this kind of thing where actual humans talk to actual humans and, uh, and gathered in a group, you know, there is a kind of broadcasting happening here. I'm saying a message that's being heard by many more people than you two. Um, you know, this is, this is getting back towards the way humans should communicate that, that the way we got media, uh, coming from very few outlets with a very high bar uh, to entry is really reflective of, of pre-enlightenment thinking, uh, you know, authoritarian thinking, and that, that, you know, this is good. That This is journalism, Darren. Welcome. <laughs> that should make you feel much better, right? Well, I can tell you I'm real, but I don't know about Birdo Prey. I mean, all I see is a, a picture over there, a static image, and the voice it could be computerized i don't know probably is mm. probably see even admits to it yeah mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. error error <laughs> <laughs> john demarco likes the dancing pirates thank you yeah uh, kasha says i was super impressed thank or you in she, she said impressed Sick. i n Yes, yes, sick. Sick. I need, I need my, my sick. Th this is going to be my thing. Is is like a hardcore where's, digified pedantry. Where, where's life with Matthews with his uh, sick? Yeah. Uh, GIF. I got it. I got it. I did. Did life with Matthew, Matthew make that? Like, can I? No, I uh, think he found it somewhere. It? I think okay. he found it somewhere. Okay. I got to make stuff. I think he stole it from Anti Trekker. Oh, anti trucker yeah. oh, was saying well, sick. Yeah, well, I'm not the first no. person to do that. Well, you know, Karogans they they steal all the time. So, right, Bird? <laughs> we don't steal. No. Yeah, well, that's what they said. Uh, that, that, that was such a well qualified tonally statement. We don't steal. No. So, <laughs> continue the thought. <laughs> I mean, sometimes we borrow, <laughs> we, um, let's see, what would I say? <laughs> hey, you put him on the spot here. Who's you, talking usually to the media have, now? <laughs> you usually have a quick comeback, Bird. What's wrong? I, I, well, this is, I'm on, I'm on a news show. I need to be very, very specific. It's a gotcha Evil media journalism. here. Yeah. yeah. Gotcha media. I don't, I don't want this to come back at me. Wow. Uh, <laughs> oh, we borrow. We, uh, you know, we we uh, we go into business with others. We partner up. Mm. Uh, we, we don't we don't steal. We uh, go into business with others. I love that euphemism. It's a good uh, one. <laughs> we take their shit, and then later maybe we give them something. We requ we requisition. <laughs> Ah, good. You acquire. We requisition. We acquire. Yes. Or C. Yeah, C. Kuroga acquire. Acquire. <laughs> Kuroga acquire. Uh, oh, I can't. They canceled. They canceled. Uh, or uh, that wasn't Dr. Seuss, was it? Okay. Then it's okay. <laughs> we buy things at discounts prices sometimes. Mm -hmm. you know? We buy lots. We buy, buy we, lots of things. We, uh, yeah, we get, yeah, we get an off the truck discount. Yeah. Sometimes, <laughs> off the shelf. Know, Pers oftentimes, Pers times, fell off a this truck. Is, th this is how they buy. They they walk up with a with a weapon and they point it and say, "You will give this to me, <laughs> right, but we'll right. pay for it." Hell oh, yeah! It's, you, you, not you, yeah to, pay, it's not illegal. It's not illegal to have a gun in Karoga. So mm -hmm. if somebody <laughs> you know decides they're part. gonna sell me their truckload of contents for a nickel. That's a legally binding uh, deal. Yeah, right? it, was okay. Okay. it was their Darren choice. It was their choice. Darren Wagner. Dar Darren Wagner likes the countdown timer. Very nautical. Thank you. Thank you. Eastland Burkholder says, "I suggest a meatloaf-like theme." Oh yeah, I would do anything for love, but not that. <laughs> <laughs> John DeMarco <laughs> says, "Birdo Prey Five is clearly a bot." 
Well, we've known that for a while, but uh, I mean, he, he practically advertises it. But uh, well, you know, yeah, he does. He, that's why he's so into Star Trek because he's like so desperate to be sentient. Uh, you know, it's like Data or what's the guy in the Orville? What's his name? Uh, yeah, Mercer? Isaac. Isaac. Mercer? Isaac. Oh. Isaac. Yeah. Have Isaac. you noticed? Have you noticed? Yeah, the data that that Isaac on the Orville. He's a. For those of you who aren't watching these things now, he's another. He's a robot. He's a droid thing. Um, that his voice and intonation and even pronunciation uh, is almost exactly like Data's. They sound almost exactly alike. They did a beautiful job of that. Oh, I know. Yeah, it's no, it's no surprise. I mean, they don't. They were exactly going for Star Trek: The Next Generation, right? Oh yeah, yeah. I mean that was what they were aiming for. So, and my favorite character, what's his name again? Yafit. Yeah, no, or I Bordis. love Yafit. Oh. Or Bordis. Yes, Bordis. Bordis. I guess that's supposed to be Worf, but I like him way more than I like Worf. Well, he's he's got some characteristics of Worf, but I think he's a little bit different. How do we get here? Uh, from, oh, I guess we're still in Star Trek. Okay. It's, it's okay. <laughs> I, I don't know how we got here. It's okay. It's still Star Trek. We started it, with William Shatner. It's it's quantum. It's it's Trek par parallel. <laughs> Um, well, anyway. well, Seth MacFarlane is a big Star Trek fan. I was going to say, course, yeah, you so. should try to see if Seth MacFarlane will give you an interview. Yeah, it's a good he idea. Might. Can, he, he might. Then you can yeah. uh, show William Shatner how it's done. There you go. <laughs> Gay <laughs> war. <laughs> this is, uh, Bird, this is not making sense. You're making sense. Oh, yes. You too can buy things at a discount at SD GameSwap. Use code word. What the hell are you talking about? I don't use code words or give discounts. <laughs> <laughs> Good job, Bio Mike. So Richie Poole wants to know, who would win in a global conflict? Kuroga, Trash Kanistan, or Turdistan? Um, oh, Trash Kanistan is, is uh, we're the wastebasket in the Midwest. We don't fight wars. We don't. We don't. We don't do that. We accept. We accept your used munitions uh, uh, from <laughs> from your war. But uh, other than that, you know, like we're really just trying to trade with uh, Kuroga right now for Kuroga's excess vultures. But it's vultures. we're in difficult relations uh, with trade the, our uh, used munitions. Well, well, don't they're, get any technology from inside Kuroga. of Turdistanis when we trade them. Hmm. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you don't want any Krogan technology. It'll break, burn, uh, <laughs> blow itself up, something the, within only a couple of minutes. Only if it's designed to do those things. Uh, well, it's all designed to do that. those things. So, well, it, but, but Bird made a really good about point. It. These munitions have been used, and so by definition, they are in Turdistan. <clears throat> Or right? in Turdistanese. Well, the other. right, exactly. So, so actually, well, we, you're right. The big problem is we need to be, we need to be talking to Turdistan about shipping us the munitions that were used by Kuroga to shoot into Turdistan. Well, well here, here's the problem with that. Kurogan munitions always miss the target. Oh well, we haven't had any trash that doesn't make any sense. Well, anyway, Trash Canistan's fine. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we're the I'll, waste I'll move, I'll, the best. I'll move to your country, Andrea. <laughs> Thank you. Come on, come on over. We want you. We want all the brainy specs we can get. Uh, yeah. Let's see. Bio, um, Bio, Bio Mike says, "Hey, not all Canadians are bad. Take Commodore Ty and Captain Foley." That's true. But do they, but you put them, I don't know. Can you put them on a set of scales with the, with the other, other Canadians? Justin Bieber, Celine Dion. <laughs> Is Celine Dion Canadian? I know she lives on Martha's Vineyard or something. I don't know. She looks Canadian. I think Steve Carell is Canadian and Jim Carrey. There are all these uh, Canadian comedians, which makes it hard because Canadian, 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 Canadian. Canadian. Yeah, exactly. 
Exactly. Say that three times fast. You really want a John Lehrer. Is it John Lehrer? Who's the guy who wrote the songs? I don't know. I don't know. I'm feeling like, uh, you know, there's a lot more. Yeah, uh, she's Canadian. She was born in Quebec. She's Quebecois, no less. John well, Marcus <laughs> says, like a poor marksman, you keep missing the target. Is that is that is that some reference I'm not getting? Bird, do you want to tell reference. her? It is a reference. What is it? What is it a reference to? Bird. Bird. Jeff. Bird. <laughs> is there some reason you don't want to tell me? Is it about me? Oh my god! No, no, it's not about you. Don't don't get paranoid now. <laughs> What is it? Well, I'm waiting for Bird to tell you. Uh, it's, it's it's those words were spoken by William Shatner. <laughs> they were in what? Yes, Star Trek II: The Wrath of Khan. Gone. I did that for you just the other day when my friend was talking about being uh, descended from Genghis Khan, as he said it. Yeah, Genghis. Mm -hmm. I was like, I loved whoever said Jenga. Said made some joke about the parlor game Jenga. That was me. That was awesome. It's always you with the good jokes, Bird. That's why we love you. Though in fairness, I think somebody else made a very similar comment. Though I hadn't read it at the time I'd made mine. Theirs was not about Jenga, though. It was about... I don't remember what it was. Mine was Jenga Khan, the ultimate party game about uh combat and building or something yeah it was building awesome. and combat yeah you went a layer deeper it was good it's good comedy comedy gold well my friends are there any last questions from the uh the chat uh darren well, is saying that he mentioned me in his last video and i shunned him i have not seen the video yet because mm -hmm. i honestly Honest to God, I have not had to work a whole lot in a year because of this. <laughs> I mean, I've done lots of projects. I do. I'm always working. But like, I actually have had to work in the last, I know, cry me a river. Uh, and I have just been crazy busy. I need to be shipped back to Costa Rica where I can be more Central American about <laughs> But I promise you, Darren, that when this stream is over, I will watch the video because I love Darren and I am honored and I just, I want to see it and I'm sorry. Okay. No, Richie Poole, I did not fall asleep. Well, I was wondering what that noise was you made, Bird. Do you make up a noise? I didn't yeah, he, noise. He made, yeah, he made, yeah. Mom will pray went mean? out the door. I mean, that could have been. Didn't you jump on well, a, yeah. like a hot rod? Blame Mom will pray. Yeah, God. Next to be John blaming DeMar nephew will pray, who's like eight months old or something. Yeah, the, the poor little nephew. Well, John DeMarco put a link in for you, Andrea, to Darren's latest video. Oh, awesome. Thank you. Thank you very much. I do love yeah. you, Darren. I can pick these fake flowers. She loves me. <laughs> she loves me not. She loves me. Wow. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm in a Richie. Richie Pool does have a question. He asks, uh, "What is the meaning of life?" Uh, uh, you mean the answer to life, the universe, and everything? Because that's forty-two. Obvi. Um, I had a little. Uh, by the way, else? Uh, the meaning of life is love as many people as you can. The end. Um. The uh, I walked into somebody's office who I have had only an online relationship with for a long time. I've managed to actually like go into their office and and their office had I swear I was so cool. You guys, I have to tell you about it. That's how nerdy we are. Right. Because we have to tell each other when we're cool. I pointed out correctly uh, memorabilia from like eight different sci-fi franchises. And he was like, Oh my God, I love doing that because people think I'm such a political person and I never meant to cover politics. Y'all. It just happened to me. Enough about me. Sorry. 
Now I feel like it's your show, so it has to be about you. Yeah, well, then that's a, that's a little known secret is that I never meant to cover it. My degree is in biology. I'm a tuba player uh, and a you know a music, a nature sci-fi dork fest supreme, and got into this uh, covering politics. And I I'll tell that story another time. But it always has been the years and years I was in Washington. And everybody, all everybody I knew in the Capitol and stuff were running off to, you know, meet at Bullfeathers, which is like the conservative bar on Capitol Hill. Yes, it does get segmented seg that way. Or at the other place or whatever where, you know, at night I'd be like, no, fuck that. I'm, I'm going home. I don't want to hang out with these people. Jeez. I got like, I don't know. I watch like House. And does anybody else love House? Oh, I watch it all the time. Doctor House? Yes. I mean, yes. yeah, I watched it back in the day. Yeah, yeah. Well, it was still on back then. I'm way more interested in ta in talking about stuff. He would have made a good doctor on Doctor Who. He should still do that, don't you think? Yeah, he should. Yeah, he should. He's in some right. British political show uh, that I started watching some of, which was pretty good. I bet you they've asked him before. I liked him in Veep. Yeah, he was great. He was great in Veep. Can you believe he? Uh, his accent is amazing. His American accent. Not so much in Avenue Five. Oh yeah. Oh, what do we think of Avenue Five, you guys? I I was really disappointed with Avenue Five. Although uh, Ethan Phillips, who played Neelix on Star Trek Voyager. I thought it was the best character on the show, you know, second to uh, you, Laurie, but. Yeah, yeah. I thought it had moments, but it was nothing. You know what? It's really, what's his face? What's the guy's name? Who's the snowman? What's the snowman? The snowman? Yeah, come on. You know what I'm saying. <laughs> I <laughs> wish I did. The snowman. No, Bill. Frosty? The snowman. No, <laughs> don't you people have daughters, <laughs> kids? Uh, what's the snowman's name? No, Stuart, Stuart Little. Oh my God. This is how Empress you guys feel Stuart about Little. being Trek. Kasha, what am I trying to say? Um, you know, the snowman, what did, with the, do you want? Uh, in Frozen? Yes, Frozen. Okay, I have no idea because I, I don't know anything about Frozen except that I, okay. I, I don't I watch it. Man's I did. name in Frozen, John DeMarco, right. bring it. I can ask I've Matthew. You come jo on, Josh. Josh God. Josh Gad. That's it. Gad. Josh Gad. The problem okay. with Avenue Five. Olaf. Thank you, my God, Olaf. I love Eric Saunders like Oslo. <laughs> um, the I think the problem with Avenue Five is Josh Gad because he's so annoying. He, he's like the guy who's like the owner of the, the company, you know, Bernie. Oh, him. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So he, he's a famous guy and I love him in other things. And he's a great as Olaf and he really should be an animated character like his whole life. But as a full character, it's kind of like Jack Black, but more, he's just yeah. so obnoxious, you know, he just takes over the whole thing and I, I know, it's too much. I, I don't Where? know. I just, it didn't do anything Where? for me. It was disappointing because I was Darren really Wagner hoping says, it was going to do good. Sorry, Bird. He sorry. Says, Frozen, Frozen is an awful cartoon for girls. <laughs> Frozen is brilliant. Shut up. Frozen no, is I great. Did, <laughs> I did see Frozen. I thought there was too much singing. Oh, my God. You know what? You are the wrong people to be talking to about this, clearly. Are there any <laughs> Australians? The problem is... Oh, no, no, no Aussie. You guys are not comparing it to all the other things your kid could be watching. <laughs> That's the problem. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, uh, well, and I, I, in my defense, Andrea, okay, I used to manage a library. Oh, oh I, I, oh, oh. I, I? I used to be a manager for a library, uh, and I actually showed Frozen at the library for the kids. And did and, you compare well, we had to a, other things that the kids could be watching? 
Well, yeah. I mean, I compared it to some other movies that we've shown for kids. And, you know, I thought other movies like Up were, Ooh, up. were better. Up was, yeah, fantastic. It's I loved a up. totally different thing that's like saying, you know, I don't know, 21 Jump Street is better than Star Trek. It's like, why Why do you? Why would you compare Up? I mean, maybe, okay, they're both Disney well, they're, movies. They're, yeah, they're Back. animated. Dis what, well, Up is not I a musical. The Lego movie was probably better. I, do, I don't see how we're compared. These are not the way, this is not the way you well, do it. it. You, you did ask me to compare it to other films. So, so you, you know, compare it to Cinderella? They're, they're kids. They're, they're both kids films. <laughs> I love it, Kasha. Too much singing in this musical. <laughs> it's totally. Yes. Thank you. It's just, it's just, we're having, we're talking past each other. I, I, I was another... expecting me. <laughs> I was expecting singing. Not that much. <laughs> Not that too much. Too much singing. Nope. Cancel. Um, <laughs> besides, the singing's brilliant. The song. Anyway, we're not going to have this discussion. Um, <laughs> My uh, biggest I, problem with Fantasia was all the music. Yeah, God. Jeez. Well, Darren it. Wagner has a point here. He says, we don't judge something by how it compares with everything else out there. We judge it on its own merits. Yeah. This animation Thank has you, too much animation in it. <laughs> um, so um, I was going to ask about, oh, the other space show, the one with Steve Carell, where he suddenly oh, becomes, uh, yeah. Yeah, uh, Space Force. Space Force. What do you think that of that? I really liked. I'm hoping they come back with a second season. I mean, it's always kind of touch and go when you have someone as big as Steve Carell involved in something, right? I feel I like have... Space Force, they started it out thinking it was going to be an off-the-wall comedy, and it got a little more serious than they expected it would. Hmm. And so the president like announced girl. the Space Force. <laughs> The United, the pre actual president of the United States announced a Space Force sort of. Well, in the, I, I think, think they were going to production or something at the time, right? I I thought it was a result of him announcing Space Force. Uh -uh. Although that's been in the hopper for years, the uh, uh, the name Space Force had been thrown around. I mean, it was it was not completely an accident, but I believe that they were they had already had all the uh, film in the can when the president announced Space Force. So there was. It, it got a little weird. It got a little bit closer. Uh, it is quarter of. Everybody needs a few minutes before they go to Polly's stream, Latino slant stream. Uh, I think this is a good. This is a good stopping place for me. I just wanted to be on the record, saying the things about the things with the things. You know what I mean, guys. <laughs> But we're not comparing anything. <laughs> oh, I see. Someone's getting huffy and taking their overlays and their headsets and going home, huh? No, I didn't say that now. <laughs> I'm just saying we're not comparing things. I'm finding uh, uh, Latina Slats, uh, Slants oh, uh, link, sure. and I'm going to repost it. <clears throat> awesome. Is Anti Trekker uh, sending out? Is he twitching right now? He's, he's on Twitch now. Oh, cool. Overseeing, claiming of supposedly overseeing the conviction of life with Matthew, but. Now, wait a minute. I'm supposed to be there. Wait, I'm supposed to be the head of that. Yeah, yeah so I, I guess, I guess Matthew's got a, a stay or whatever. What? By some kangaroo court, well, maybe. Yeah, well, you you guys weren't there to present your cases, so. And and I, I was. I'm told. sorry. I'm I the judge. Told. I'm the one who tells them when to show up in court. Doesn't work that way. Well, he apparently decided that he was going to. It says that right under the conviction of Matthew, is not even saying that it's the trial. He's already at the conviction stage. Ah, uh, I, Professor, I think you and I have to go over there and and raid. Uh, I don't, I know there's a button that says raid this channel. I don't know what it does, but we can go try that on Twitch. <laughs> we need to hit it. I think we need to do it. I think we, we are that. that big red button. Yeah. Yep. 
Yep. Thank you, Kasha. Always backing me up, that babe. Twitching does sound gross. <laughs> um, so, um, <laughs> Uh, Kasha is going to be on my channel soon and we'll have a real discussion, which will break down into a very, very not real and totally silly discussion. Um, and I'll make sure everybody knows when that's going to happen. Okay, everybody. And, and John DeMarco says, <laughs> speaking of life with Matthew, he puts a link into life with Matthew's channel. Twitch stream. Okay, great. Well, we'll go over there. You and me, Professor Brady Spade. I don't know about you, Bird of Prey. Can we count on your support for this uh, maneuver here? Well, remember, they're both Karogans, so I wouldn't count on Bird of Prey for this. And I'm probably going to sleep. Because I'm a journalist. But I do wish you guys the best results for keeping Matthew free. <laughs> no. Oh, no, no, no. We're not trying to keep Matthew free. We're trying to take our trial back. We want to convict him. <laughs> you you misjudged that my friend uh, well that's a common occurrence with bird so yeah <laughs> it's lovely we to love see you all. Bird. thank you all for coming on tomorrow uh is uh is tomorrow bed life yes I think it is bed life with bird of prey five tomorrow on youtube you will want to see it because he gets the most incredible letters uh in the world from his audience. And uh, and you, Professor Brainy Specs, my non-existent hat is now fully off to you. Thank you very much for well, your thank you for, for uh, you're very welcome. It's my pleasure. And thank you for having me on the panel. And I just want to invite everyone. Uh, we're going to have um, an upload tomorrow on on history with R and R if I can keep my channel straight. Ooh. And our uh, we'll also have a live stream this coming Monday at 2 p.m. Eastern, so check that out. And don't forget, a question of Trek this Saturday, 6.30 p.m. Eastern time. And I think uh, Mr. Birdo Prey 5 is going to be on that one. So, And I make no promises at all whatsoever about what I'm doing at any time until later when my life is slightly calmer. But do subscribe to my channel if you haven't yet, because because that would be nice. Or whatever. <laughs> like, Smash share, like subscribe, button. and all that other stuff. Okay, really good to see you all. Darren, I'm going to watch the video, but first I got to raid uh, Anti Trekker with him. Yes, so. absolutely. See you guys we're, soon. We're going there. Thanks for coming. Mwah. Mwah.